viewers, you are welcome again to my channel. Should in case you are new to this channel, my name is Fama Tanto. I'm a grassroots environmental activist. I'm a social entrepreneur. And I am here in my village in Taku, where I am starting a movement from Taku to the world. You know, I'm moving back to my roots. And today I am in a farm. You know, when I was about eight years old, my grandmother used to farm on this same farm. And it is so interesting how when I used to leave school, I will come back from school and I will come and join her in this same farm. After so many years, now that she is so old, other family members are farming in this farm. Actually, what brought me to this farm is because my grandmother shared with me an amazing story. This story dates back when my father was two years old. She told me when my father was two years old, he was very sick. He took, she took him to a nearby hospital, which is about 50 kilometers away from here in Kumbo. And there were some white doctors that treated my father. And these white doctors told my grandmother that this your little child, when he grows up, you should send him to school. Because through him, you one day see people like us coming to give medicine in your village in Taku. My grandmother took this for granted and she came back home. And then out of a sudden, these European doctors, they were about going back to Germany. They had to hike for more than four hours, you know, from their area of work to come right to this village in Taku. When they came and they were asking for my grandmother, she had come to this same farm. That was 1947, when my father was two years old. And then they came right to this farm to meet my grandmother. And they told her the same story. They have just come to tell her bye-bye. But they have come to remind her that this your little boy, when he grows up, send him to school because through him, you one day see people like us coming to give medicine in this, in this village. So, and this is after so many years, since 1947. In 1996, my father passed away. And through me, I grew up and I had the opportunity to travel around the world. And interestingly, in 2022, I was elected Making More Health Fellow. And as a Making More Health Fellow, my role is to scale up water conservation you know, both in Cameroon and in Kenya, to say we could protect our springs water catchment, we could ensure that people should have access to safe drinking water. If people could get drinking water and they don't get sick, then it shows that I'm contributing to the health sector. So as a making more health fellow, I'm coming back to my roots in this same farm to recall what my grandmother told me. And someday, somehow, I believe that we're going to have a modern hospital in this village in Taku. I remember in 2017 when I came back to this uh, to visit my grandmother with the American writers, she was not at home and she was in this same farm. Immediately, she saw me coming from afar. I just shouted, Grandma! And she started dancing. She danced to the point that she came and fell on my feet. I almost shed tears. It was an amazing moment. It was a fulfilling moment. I just believe that she is alive for a purpose. She's over a hundred years now. Probably she's alive to see that this vision of a hospital in this village shall come to pass before she passes away. And someday, I believe that we're going to build this hospital in memory of her, and it's going to be named Serantala Community Hospital. And because of a vision that some German doctors told her some years back when my father was two years old. Viewers, it is high time we need to come back to our roots to give back. And if such a testimony is coming from my grandmother, I think God speaks to people in so many ways. And I am confident that someday, somehow, as I'm growing this amazing platform, we're going to raise funds, we're going to, to, to raise funds, we're going to look for partners so that we can bring access to medical care in my rural village in Taku. So from here, I'll be traveling to the nearby town where my grandmother is living with my older brother, She's still alive, she's still very strong, and I hope she'll be able to tell us the testimony about, you know, this place and the vision of the hospital. So I'll be meeting with my grandmother to, 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 to see her. It will be such an amazing moment to reconnect with her again after, after about five years that I haven't seen her. I grew up with my grandmother when I was a little boy. And now, after so many years, you know, she was in the village alone, in my village of origin in Taku. So now, our family decided that she should come and live with my elder brother here in Kambe Town, since she was all left alone. 
My grandmother used to be my inspiration and she featured in my book, I Am Farmer, Growing an Environmental Movement in Cameroon. So ever since the book was published, I've never had the opportunity to meet her, to show, to show her because she was published in the book as well. So this is the time that I've come to meet her. And she has an inspiring story that she always tells me every time I come to visit her. So she's about 106 years old now. And then she lives with my elder brother here in Kambe. So this is, this is my story that was illustrated in a children's book titled, I am farmer growing an environmental movement in Cameroon. It was recently translated into French in France and it is going to be used in all over French African countries and Haiti. But the English copy is being used in elementary schools across the United States. Interestingly, you see on the first page, you see my grandmother featured in the book, in the first page of the book, Sirantala from Atanto's grandmother, who taught him uh, gardening at a very young age. And she's alive today to see this testimony. So she has never seen this book before. So we're going to show her this book. This is the most fulfilling part of the whole story. I feel so touched, you know, growing up with my grandmother as a little boy. And now after so many years, the writers left America, came to hear from my grandmother how I was doing when I was a little boy. Wow, it's amazing. Mama. Hello, Mama. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> wow. I'm so so Mama, okay, Mazi. Eh, <laughs> it's almost like five years I've not seen my grandmother just appearing in front of the door. She called me by my name, Tanto. This is, this is my grandma. She's so dear to me. Wow. And she's so dear to everyone in the family. Mama. <laughs> Mama. Uh, Mama. Natibiki. Natibiki. Hi viewers, this is my grandmother. You know, when I was a little boy, my grandmother took me when I was about six years old to live with her in my village in Taku. And she was the first person who started teaching me about agriculture. Interestingly, I used to sleep on my bamboo bed with my two little goats. I used to pee on the bed. I pee on the goats and the goats would pee on me. Yeah. It was always fun, you know? So interestingly, when my grandmother came and took me from the city, she bought onions and she came and kept the onions in the kitchen so they started germinating so i sneak some of these onions in under a banana tree and every day when i come back i go to my secret garden to look at the onions at some point they started dying 
and she had accused a lot of people around the neighborhood that they stole her onions, not knowing that her, her six-year-old grandsons took the onions and kept mm -hmm. under a banana tree. So when they started drying up, I told her that I was the one who took the onions. Then from there, she started telling, telling me that they, they were drying up because they needed sunlight and water. Nature has a way of doing things. So when the writers of my story came from America, they came and visited my grandma and they got the first hand story. So this is my story. And my grandma featured in the book as the first person who started teaching me agriculture at a little age. And now she's over 106 years to witness this book and to witness herself that she was published in a book and they're using the story in all the primary schools across the United States. So it is so fulfilling that I came all the way to Kambe to visit my grandmother. And this is the most touching part of my whole life. So, Mama, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, Mama, I'm going to ask you, Mama, I'm going to ask Mama, I'm going Mama, I'm going to ask you, Mama, yeah. I went on. Have you been being a simmer? Say someone, eh? You are a big guard is a finish. Go about. I'm making two and one week. I'm making two and one week. You are not a big cook. I'm making two and one week. 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 I'm making two and <laughs> She's recalling a story when I was a little boy. She would ask me to take a shower. I said, um, If I'm going to take a shower, I will not eat. She would prefer me to stay and sleep like that without taking a shower and eat food. That's what she is recalling. Wow. <laughs> I used to love farming so much. When she says stop farming, I said, I'm going to keep on walking. Mama, I hope I'm a man. I'm I'm <laughs> Mm -hmm. My <laughs> I don't hear any day in the running cup, my dear, yes, I know my dear, I need to my dear, I come on, how much you got? Came up by don't over here. Go from Chef Bibi Mala, Mamma laugh and from Chef Mamba. Don't over ya, it was general book, what that's a young Mala about him. Don't over him when he came back.
So my grandmom is recalling a story. She has told me this vision several times that when my dad was two years old, around 1947. <laughs> So my grandma is sharing a testimony that when my dad was two years old, he was sick. She took him to a nearby hospital in Du, and some white doctors treated my father and told her that when this child grows up, she should send him to school because through this child, she wanted to see people like doctors coming to my village, probably to help the community, to give medicines to the community. So she took it for granted and went back to the village in Taku. So these white doctors, when they were about to leave, they trek to my village in Taku and my grandmother had gone to a farm and they went right down to the farm to tell her that they're about leaving but that when my father grows up she should send him to school because one day he will be a doctor and through him they will see people like them coming to my village to give medicine so my dad became a youngest policeman in Taku in 1964 you know and unfortunately he passed away in 1996 but I used to tell him about my vision and what I want to do. And through me, I grew up and I started traveling around the world, bringing a lot of foreigners to my village. And my grandma always, she kept on telling me the story. So now that she featured in the book, I Am Farmer, I got an inspiration that I want to give back to my village in Taku. So we want to use my story and my grandma's testimony to raise funds to build a community hospital in my village in memory of her. It is going to be named Serantala Community Hospital so that this vision of 1947 should come to pass. And in future, we'll be hosting volunteers from all over the world that will come to my village to, to attend to the healthcare, you know, to the medical healthcare system of the village, you know, to treat people. So that is the dream. And I just hope that she is alive for this purpose. It's 27 years that my dad passed away, but she is still alive for this purpose. And we're looking forward to that day when we're going to install a community hospital in my village in memory of my grandmother. It's going to be named Serantala Community Hospital. <laughs> Move one do a book and go to a boy one. But won't go here, I don't go bungo jigger. My young go jigger, Tavi. My lord, tell me how I love Jimmy. May you go away on bungo. A bungo go 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 Viewers, nature works in so many ways that we can never understand. I remember the last time when we visited her in 2017. We went to the same farm that those doctors came to say goodbye. And interestingly, she never knew we were coming. And I came with the writers, you know, the African American and their wife, you know, a white American. And we went to the same farm and she started recalling the same story when they came to interview her about my life when I was a little boy. So that is a testimony which we are striving forward to now to see how we can make the vision come to pass. Thank you for always coming back to my channel. Thank you for always clicking.
together we can support those making a difference in Africa to let them shine. It's always good to visit your elders, your old people, because through them you tap words of wisdom, and through them you tap some blessings that is beyond human imagination. I am farmer. No farmer, no future. Peace and blessings. <laughs>